guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is cassandra gonzalez i'm gonna be doing a quick video today it's going to be titled um what do i do if someone offends me or hurts me uh it's just something that i know i had already posted up a video uh i believe it was yesterday which took forever um i know i had already posted that video but i feel that there is a need to speak about this and i'm not gonna wait until sunday to speak about it when there's a need of it for it right now um so let's go ahead and pray. It's going to be real quick, but I mean, it's still going to, we still got to pray. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I welcome you here and I just thank you. Thank you for this privilege, for this honor, this opportunity. Thank you so much that it is that you are such an amazing God. Teach us to praise you. Teach us to pray, uh, Father God, and teach us to just live for you, God. Uh, give us... Give us the methods to be able to live like you, Father God. In your word, it is clearly an example of how it is to live like you, God. Help us to be stirred up by your spirit, to be touched by you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and set us on fire, I beg of you. I just pray that this message is a blessing to those who need to hear and an encouragement and, and a, a message that is comforting, Father God. In your blessed name, I pray. I, I surrender and I leave this message to you and for you to have your way, Lord. Have your way with us, Lord. In your name, I pray. Amen. So, I'm going to go ahead and um, start, okay? So, offense can come in many different ways, shapes, or forms, right? I'm going to name a few. Obviously, you have to keep in mind that some of these can be, majority of these can be intentional. But also, some of these can be unintentional where people don't know that they're offending you, okay? Uh, first one could be someone doing a backhanded compliment. Like, they tell you, you look good for like a 30-year-old woman. And it's like, it's kind of like a, they compliment you, but then they like insult you. You know, um, there's uh, a way that you can be hurt or offended is by rumors being started about you or people gossiping about you, uh, by people calling you names. And that could be like profanity, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. That could be like... <clears throat> That could be like um, someone calling you like a female dog, like profanity, like cursing at you, right? I put it as name calling, but there's uh, like calling you um, stupid or dumb or things like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, it could be a, with someone saying something about you or, um, or someone saying something to you. It could be how someone treated you or how they didn't treat you. If they didn't treat you with respect, you know, it could, it could hurt you. It could be offensive to you. Uh, if they ignored, excluded, or rejected you, it could be hateful words. Um, it could be taunting people, taunting you. Uh, like um, A lot of these, you guys know what I mean by that. Like taunting, like, oh, you wouldn't do that because you're a wuss. You know, things like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, or using you as a... People can offend you even by using you like a punching bag, you know. Um, or cause you pain by doing that. Or being told, someone telling you to your face that they hate you or they hated you, that could be hurtful or could be offensive. Or how that made you feel as if it is that you are less. Or just being disliked or judged or hated uh, for who you are or what it is that you do, right? So these are just a few um, examples. Obviously, there's more ways that you can be offended, but I'm just going to give you a few who can end up offending you? Well, it can go from being family members such as your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, or like um, your cousins, your uncles, your 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 tias, you know, things like that. Um, or aunts, sorry. <laughs> kind of went a little bit lingual there. Um, it could be, you know, it just could be that. Or grandparents. It could also be fall under romantic relationships. Either your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your uh, fiancé. Um, it could be friendships, um, you're either your homie or homegirl, like they offended you or things like that. That's, you know, obviously it could also be a coworker that could offend you. It could be a supervisor, manager, or a boss, or it could even be a complete stranger that offends you, right? And how can it make you feel to be offended or to be hurt? Well, um, it can make you feel super mad. Um, it can make you sad or even glad, glad because, um, I don't know about you guys, but it could even give a person a motive to retaliate or to, you know, um, get back at someone, you know, things like that. Or I'm glad that you said that because you know what, you know, things like that. It could cause many a stir of emotions. It could cause a variety of emotions to rise up within you to have uh, someone offend you or cause pain or hurt. Um, it could cause you to harden your heart. It can cause you to desire vengeance. It could cause you to um, ne vow to never forgive them ever again. Uh, you can pre also pretend it never happened or you can retaliate, etc. Uh, the list can go on, right? Uh, but it, most importantly, it, can, it, it hurts you. 
it hurts you to be offended or to be hurt or to be caught or for someone to cause pain right so there's a the word of god i'm clearly going to go into the word of god i'm going to go based off of i was driving to work um uh, what day was it yesterday i was driving to work and the holy spirit was like really pouring these scriptures into me because there was something that had happened that had really been offensive and and, and just like hurtful um and so that happened like a few days before so what ended up happening is that the holy spirit was just pouring into me i was just like you know about to harden my heart and the holy spirit was like pouring into me and i was like i don't really like he just gave me a list of scriptures and then someone else also reached out to me and was like hey you know what do i do or things like that and i was like wow that was definitely from the holy spirit there was a reason why it is that he was pouring into me and giving me all these scriptures because i'm not the only one that's going through it you know and so he just like downloaded on uh, into me when it is that i um was driving to work so uh, i also obviously gave this message to that individual to that person but then i was like you know what there's a need for this video because i'm not the only one that's been offended that person's not the only one that's been offended or hurt and there's obviously other people you know it's not just uh uh that person and i it's more people so that's why and the holy spirit was pouring into me so i'm gonna give you the scriptures that the holy spirit gave to me it's a total of seven but i'm gonna go through them quickly and then i'm after afterwards explain um, so first and foremost, let's go to Matthew chapter five, verse 38 through 39. <clears throat> okay. You have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. 38 through 39. Okay. So, um, pretty much when it is that someone does you wrong, you want to just like do them wrong back, right? You want to retaliate. But the word of God is clearly saying, you know, many people say like, oh, it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But the word of God is clearly saying if someone slaps you in the cheek, turn the other cheek so they can slap that one as well, which is completely contradictory or not contradictory, but it's completely opposite to what it is that you and I want to do what our flesh wants to do. Right. But the word is saying that. So I'm going to just go ahead and mention that to you. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the other scriptures. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 6 verse 27 through 28 Luke chapter 6 verse 27 through 28 and it says but I say aunt uh, but I say to you who hear okay have ears to hear right now guys ears to hear but I say to you who hear love your enemies do the, do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who abuse you isn't that crazy that the word of God is saying love your enemies instead of saying hate your enemies it says love your enemies do good to those who hate you so those people that hate you that have told you to your face that they hate you or that they've hated you or things like that the word of God is saying to be do good to them okay and then it says to bless those who curse you um, like those people that have like, oh, I hope something bad happens to you or like even them cursing at you or things like that. What does the word of God say? It says to bless them. This is like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this, God. Like what makes you think I want to do this? And then it says pray for those who abuse of you. And I know that you guys have had people that have abused of you either spiritually, mentally, uh, uh, physically or, or, um, even financially, emotionally, mentally, you know, but what does the word of God say? It says pray for those who abuse of you or who have abused of you. Um, so, it, so the word of God is very clear and very concise. Now I'm going to go on to the next scripture. Please write down the scriptures as we go. Okay. Because they're going to help you. They've been helping me. I've been meditating on them. Um, let's go to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verse 20 to through 21. Romans chapter 12, verse 20 through 21. To the contrary, oh goodness. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will reap burning coals on his head. Do not over, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So uh, it says, if your enemy is hungry, what does it say? Let him starve? No, it says that you have to feed him. If your enemy is, um, if he is thirsty, what do you do? You give him something to drink. Um, by doing so, you will uh, heat burning coals on his head. When you are good to someone that's been nothing but mean and evil and, and just cruel and wicked to you, and you are good to them, what happens is that they afterwards feel this this guilt. They feel it in their consciousness. They just feel so guilty, like, oh my gosh, why are you being so good to me when it is that I've done nothing but been evil to you? And, and that's why the Word of God says that you, they... Uh, for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on their head. They will feel the 
guilt. They will feel that conviction. They will feel that like sorrow. Like, oh my gosh, why are they so good to me? I don't deserve for them to be good to me. If anything, like uh, they should be like worse to me. They should be even more evil to me than what it is that I've been to them. But the word of God is very different um, to what it is that, you know, people expect or what we should be doing or things like that or what we think we should do. It says, do not be overcome by evil. But what does it say? Overcome evil with God. If someone's evil to you, what are we to do? We are to overcome their evil with our goodness, with the goodness of the Lord, the grace of the Lord. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 18. I'm a little bit a lot in the book of Matthew today. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through <clears throat> verse 21 through 22. Mm -hmm. Okay, check this out. This one's kind of, I love this scripture. Um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 22. It says, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me? And I forgive him as many as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Now check this out. Peter thought he was being generous in saying seven times because they were saying they they thought that three in a day was like plenty, like kind of like three strikes you're out type of thing. But Peter was like, I'm going to be generous it's seven times. And the, the Jesus was like, nah, homie, like 77 times. So, you know, like seven times. Uh, 11 pretty much 77 times so Peter thought he was being generous but even then like Jesus was like nah bruh even more than that and that's in a day that's in a day now we have to remember that God's mercies are new every morning right so if God's mercies are new every morning for us what makes us think that we should not have new mercies for other people and be gracious and kind to them as how it is that God is to us um Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15. For if you forgive those, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now check this out. Majority of the times we're like, God, please forgive us for our sins. You know, um, <clears throat> please forgive us for our sins. You know, the ones we're aware about, the ones we're not aware about. But in order for us to be able to be forgiven, you know, we also have to forgive others. It's how it is that we expect that forgiveness. So let's also go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. And I'm going to explain it to you afterwards. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. It says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. In deed means kind of like in action, in truth, okay? Then let's go to 1 Corinthians the very well known first corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 through 7 i just realized my hair looks really crazy i didn't do it this morning can you tell it says love is patient and kind love does not envy or boast it is not arrogant or rude it does not insist on its own way it is not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth love bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things now um, with all of this being said, what does the word, of, the word of God clearly is explaining like what we want to do in our flesh. It's telling us to do the opposite, to overcome evil with goodness, to forgive our brother, not just seven times and 77 times. If, our, if, if our enemy, you know, slaps us on the cheek, what are we to do to ha uh, turn the other cheek? You know, slap me here, boom, here, just, you know, like right here. Just hit it. You know, that's what the Bible uh, is, is saying. Um, it also says, like, love your enemies. Like, and it says to feed your enemy if he's hungry, to give him water if he's thirsty. You know, um, it's it's saying all of these things. And, and, and if you really, really, really meditate on those scriptures, I know I gave you a few. But a lot of those things, it's the opposite of what we want to do. We want to act out in vengeance and, and rebellion and, and, and be like them. But what change are we going to make if we are acting like them? Uh, it, it makes me, I'm going to just tell you something really quickly w with God being so good to me. I've told him many times. Okay. Cause I don't talk to him. Like he's like not here. Cause he is here. He's here right now. Okay. I told God at one point in my relationship with him, not too long ago, but I told him, God, if you were to be an evil God, considering how evil and how wicked I am, I wouldn't be serving you. But because you overcome my evil with your goodness, 
That's why I serve you because that's why I keep coming back to you because of the fact that you are so good that I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving of it. But that's why I keep coming back to you because I don't deserve it and I'm not worthy of it. But I still see your love exemplified in my life on an everyday basis everywhere that I go and all that I do and all that I am. And so we need to be the example. We need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, right? We want to, we say, Jesus, more of you and less of me. But are we really trying to be, are we really acting out in those moments that we have the opportunity to be more like Jesus and less like us? And it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's really hard. We need to act love out, not just say like, oh, and yesterday I posted on my Instagram. I don't know if you checked it out. You should definitely follow me if you're not <laughs> uh but the holy spirit was just like pouring into me in the gym you know and we are t love is not just a noun for something that oh like i love that or it's not it's it's a verb and a verb is an action and an action is something that you need to do so you need to act out love um and what does the word of god say about love like let me go ahead and read it to you again love is patient so when people are mean to you and, and cruel and wicked love is patience and kind um, you're not going to envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And I had this thing where I was like, um, I think there is an, an, another version where it says like, um, love keeps no record of wrong. And I was like, Arr! like, I was like keeping record of wrong and it convicted me today. The Holy Spirit was like really pouring into me and I'm like, you know what? You're right. It doesn't matter how many times they've done it. It doesn't matter how many times they will do it in the future. You know, I have to forgive them. I have to forgive them. Not sometimes it may not even be for them. Sometimes it's just for me. Um, so I've had people tell me that they've hated me to my face and you know, it's like, this is hard God this is hard but I'm telling you it's worth it because if it is that you harden your heart it's like you're like it's kind of like you drinking the poison expecting them to like you know if you don't forgive you're drinking the poison expecting them to die but it's actually hurting you I know what it is to not forgive someone I know what it is um I felt the pain and, and I oh my gosh it's the worst feeling ever it's the worst feeling ever you feel like a pit in your stomach it, like it, it just like you feel a hole you can't breathe you're like Ugh, you know and I've actually at one point didn't want to forgive someone that had hurt me so badly but I couldn't do it I was like I have to forgive them because I I can't I'm not okay so does it excuse their behavior no does it make it it doesn't make it that much better no the fact that you know but there's something that we need to follow and and this person that reached out to me you know I explained to them they're like you know what you're right we need to right, be right before God's eyes and in anybody else's eyes, you know, no matter how many times I've done it, things like that. And that really like spoke to me like, yes, like, yes, it's so true. So does it, is it okay? Like that they're doing it? No. Does it hurt? Yes, absolutely. Like, absolutely. In our church, we're teaching about words and how words can really hurt. You can take away, like, you know, you can, you forget about the physical when people beat on you you know physical abuse but when it's a mental or emotional or they use their words oh my gosh you can't forget about that you know so is is it is it like something that you want to like seek vengeance for at one point you may possibly want to do that however if you leave it in god's hands the word of god says cast all your cares onto me for i care cast all cast that care onto him like god i really want vengeance you know my heart but you know what i'm gonna leave it at your hands and just pray about it pray about it and say god give me the strength to forgive that person god give me the ability give we heal my wounds jesus heal my wounds because i'm bleeding profusely like i need you to heal my wounds i need them to become scars the word of god says that he is um near to the broken heart and he finds up their wounds so he's gonna do that um now another thing you know i just want to just tell you all of this that the bible was speaking about and that it was just like poured into me it talks about forgiveness and love and i believe that forgiveness and love goes hand in hand because jesus forgave us for our sins when he did what he died on the cross right he forgave us for our sins and he did the ultimate act of love on the cross so, um, and the word of God says, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do, right? So, that's really what it is. It hurts. I'm not saying that it doesn't hurt. And I'm sorry, you know, for people offending you and hurting you. And it won't be the first time and it won't be the last time. I can guarantee you that. But you kind of have to have, like, um, 
I forgot what it's called, the terminology, but just, just pray God, God, make my heart, my forehead as hard as flint stone so that like you won't get offended, you know, and, and it, the Lord answers prayers. Like I prayed that and like, there's some things I'm like, it doesn't even phase me. It's like, okay, you know, like not that I'm being prideful or arrogant, but I had been praying because there was a moment in time where all I was ha happening to me was me being offended time after time after time. And I prayed and God, like, it just like, it was just like kind of like slipping off me. You know what I'm saying? Like slipping off me. I'm like, you know, and I'm thankful for that, but it really goes hand in hand, forgiveness and, um, and love. Okay. I'm really sorry that for the pain, there's nothing that, you know, even if the person says I'm sorry, it could possibly still, it can help, but it doesn't mean that it won't, it won't remove the pain. But God, God is there. He will take care of us. He will heal us. He will protect us. He will, you know, help us to give, give us the strength to be able to forgive the person who's done us wrong. Um, but the word of God clearly says on how to act when someone hurts you or offends you, do you ignore it. No, because it's kind of like you hardening your heart. Do you pretend like it didn't happen? No, you need to just like, sit with God and just like, God, you know what? This happened today. And he's going to be sitting there. He's like, I know, son, I saw it happen. Talk to me, you know, lay it down at my feet. There's healing power when you lay down things at, at Jesus's feet. Um, like Mary Magdalene, she was just like, you know, like at Jesus's feet, there's healing power laying things down at his feet. Okay. Um, so many other times, many, all the, all the sick, <clears throat> the lame majority a lot of the people that were lame or 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 sick or ill or anything like that were brought to jesus at his feet right um so just just lay it down at jesus's feet that's all i can say and i and it'll get better i encourage you to um just look within the depths of you and to be able to forgive them you because you need it more sometimes it's more about you needing it than what you want you know so I'm going to pray. I'm going to let you guys go. I wanted this video to be quick. Just a quick little encouraging word. I love you guys. Uh, God, I just pray that you help anyone that is in need of, um, that needs the strength to be able to forgive those who have hurt them, that you help them to have the strength to love their enemies. Help us to love our enemies, God. Help us to feed them when it is that they're hungry. Help us to be able to provide them with water if they're thirsty. Help them to forgive them not just seven times, but 77 times, God. Help us to absolutely, Jesus Christ, love our neighbors. Bless those who curse us, Father God. Um, I just pray that you help us to pray for those who abuse of us i pray that you help us to be able to absolutely and truly father god be your hands and feet for us to for us for us to be able to use it as an opportunity to be able to uh be more like you and less like us i just pray jesus christ that you you heal our wounds and that you help us to act out in love to to not just say that we love but to act it out to walk father god to walk the talk and i just thank you jesus christ that you're going to give us the strength the power the, the and the ability to be able to forgive those who hurt us i love you and I exalt you and I glorify you and i lift you up and i just i just bless your name jesus i just pray that you help us to be hungry and thirsty for you that's all i ask lord don't let our fire by, uh, burn out jesus christ i pray that you remove the skills from our eyes when we read your word, that it becomes alive for us, Lord. Help us to learn how to praise you. I beg of you, help us to learn how to pray. And not just mediocre prayers, but dangerous prayers, Lord. I love you, and I thank you so much for all that you are and for what you saved us from us, for us from. And thank you for forgiving us for our sins, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I will be posting another video as well on Sunday. <clears throat> My Instagram name is know your worth with Jesus. No underscore your underscore worth underscore with underscore Jesus. Jesus, okay. Uh, follow me there. I'm really active on it. And uh, you can reach out to me. That way you can DM me if you need prayers or if you just need like an encouraging word or things like that. I'm extremely active on it. Um... And, and I know that on YouTube, it's a little bit public, you know, it's extremely public. However, on Instagram, I'm extremely active on it. And also, you can join us on our fast day Saturday. You don't have to fast all day. <laughs> you can fast, like, one meal. Um, you know, obviously, you're drinking water. But believe me, it there, there's something that happens, something supernatural, something, something spiritual that happens when it is that you absolutely fast. And you're just like, God, I'm going to sacrifice this. And, you know, the Word of God says, oh, um man must not live off of bread alone but the but the word of god right so the bread of life so it, there's something supernatural that happens when you fast believe me just experience it once just experience it once and then you're gonna be hooked because you're gonna be like oh my gosh 
you're going to just be like so aware. It's just so amazing. I, I just encourage you guys to, if you're not fasting, you need to be fasting because the word of God doesn't say if you fast, it's when you fast, right? So I love you guys. Check out the video as well about fasting. Um, and if you need anything, let me know. I love you guys. Have a good night. Bye.